Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back. Let's talk about the full moon in Aquarius coming up in a couple of days' time on the 23rd or the 24th of July, depending on your location. So I guess the first thing is let's um, take a step back to two weeks ago where we had the new moon in Cancer. Now, that particular cycle, that particular new moon, personally, I, I found extremely challenging. I know a lot of others did as well. I've had a lot of feedback from a lot of different people. That particular new moon was, uh, well, opposite Pluto and square Chiron. So inevitably it was going to bring up some very um, intense and uh, painful types of situations that we would have had to deal with personally. <clears throat> and I think collectively it has a... It has, it has had also a very uh, broad sort of general impact on the collective just relative to the conditions that people are facing wherever they are. There's been lots of different things going on. You know, we've had um, lots of floods in Germany. You know, the people have died. People have lost their homes. I know those sorts of things happen, you know, throughout the year, um, sort of every year if you like but at the same time there is a correlation here we always need to kind of be aware of the the symbolism of the planets and you know the movements of these celestial bodies and how they might indeed correspond to the earthly matters on earth as above so below it's always the case as within so without so you know i mean the floods actually i would probably align uh, very much with jupiter going retrograde back into pisces um and uh at the moment it just went to zero degrees you know zero degrees of pisces which is where it was back in may so it's doing this whole retrograde loop going back uh through the early degrees of pisces and indeed going back into aquarius i've already spoken about that quite extensively so i won't focus on that today but it is just something interesting to note that when jupiter went retrograde and back into um the early degrees of pisces that these floods kind of just took place as it were um, and I don't mean to, you know, diminish their importance because it's been pretty serious. You know, a lot of people have lost a lot of things, including their lives. So it's pretty serious. Um, I think the new moon in cancer cycle, as I said before, was very, very challenging. And I think it, it really had a lot to do with family type of matters and situations and family relationships and, um, perhaps a lot of uh, content that would relate to your own personal circumstances with certain family members or a home life or just home, the, the conditions of life, because, you know, lots of people's lives have changed dramatically uh, in terms of location, that their, their actual home, just lots of sort of chaos and disorder, you know, Eris, the goddess Eris, squaring Pluto, of course, um, and Uranus in Taurus was in, inevitably it was always going to disrupt the the earthly matters but on the other hand it's also going to create a lot of um, revelations and revolutions relative to the stuckness of um, you could say humans uh, attachments right to to habits and to um, money and greed things like that. Um, so anyway, we've started off with a pretty significant new moon cycle that was holding some very um, powerful but very challenging energies and now we're stepping into the full moon in Aquarius, <laughs> which, you know, look, let me just share my screen. Um, it's uh, It's an interesting chart for the full moon it's an interesting full moon i don't see this as being easy necessarily um but it does really point to and does really highlight the people humanity aquarius that is the sign of humanity um communities groups of people coming together and so forth now the most interesting thing to me about this full moon is that it's sandwiched in between pluto and Saturn and that's why I said I don't think it's necessarily uh, an easy uh, full moon as it were and I guess it's probably going to connect to what started at the new moon cycle so of course you know reflect back on the last couple of weeks where that new moon started in your chart and now the 
matter is to look to where Leo and Aquarius is in your own birth chart in order to see where this full moon is basically highlighting further what perhaps started two weeks ago for you. I mean, there, there can be a, quite a positive um, sense of further understanding to matters that, that started a couple of weeks ago that you've had to work on and clear up in, in your own life, in your own personal life. So the the full moon always illuminates things, right? It's the sun, moon opposite each other. So that there's this sense of being able to see, to get a bigger picture and to have just more awareness and clarity over what's been going on the last couple of weeks. And and indeed where you've arrived relative to perhaps this decisions you made or actions you took or instigated or initiated at that time, right, during the new moon. So now in Aquarius, and Aquarius is an air sign, it's fixed, um, it's, you know, one of the, the very late signs in the zodiac wheel. It's the second last one, right? So Aquarius really does speak to uh, a broader picture, um, the ability to see uh, through more visionary type of uh, perspectives, if you like, it, it helps us and enables us to grasp, you know, the bigger picture of everything in our own personal life, but as well as the, the just the collective picture as well, right? So in other words, it helps us step out of our own personal self, Leo, okay, and actually look at situations, look at ourself from a much more detached and objective point of view. And I can't stress how important that is in our journey as, as we continue to grow and evolve every single day and all the different experiences we have. Think about a time when you, you are going through a particularly traumatic or difficult, challenging, whether it's an emotional, um, physical or mental, you know, or spiritual challenge or experience. When, when you are feeling that really strongly, not that there's anything wrong with feeling it right whatever it is we have to feel things to move through them to release them and to grow but when we are in that state of just embodiment of whatever that is if we don't take the next step and the next level which is to stand back and and get a sense of um, some objectivity it is impossible for us to to see clearly because we are just sort of submerged with the feelings that we have about that particular situation, person, etc. So this is where Aquarius is fantastic because it really enables us to get um, emotional objectivity, which one might think, well, how do you, how can you be emotionally objective and detached? Well, you can. I've got a moon in Aquarius naturally, so I can vouch for that. Um, it's not always easy, but it's it's definitely a necessity at times, right? So the the moon in Aquarius relative to our, our own personal life circumstances at this point in time is a great indicator for some emotional detachment and objectivity to situations that we have been overseeing, engaged with, initiated or challenged by, okay? From a collective perspective, it's really highlighting the, the people on the planet today relative to the global circumstances that we are all subjected to in one way or another, there is a lot of pushback, right? There is a lot of pushback from people, communities, countries, um, different cultures and so forth. And of course, because of the, um, you know, uh, absolute censorship that's going on, um, a lot of people don't get to see what's going on in other countries. You know, like I, I created some posts, um, Facebook, Instagram, wherever it was, uh, and, um, you know, a lot of people had no awareness that these sorts of protesting and things were going on in this country or that country and, and so on and so forth. So there is a lot going on, but it is hidden. You know, it is censored. It is removed very quickly once it's put onto a social platform media. As you guys know, it's certainly not... Um, highlighted in consensus reality media and news we all know that as well and we know that what is integrated and presented is what um is controlled by saturn okay that's the consensus media reality that's saturn so when you see a full moon in aquarius 
which is the people, literally humanity at large. And you see this full moon is in sandwich in between Pluto and Saturn. On the one hand, we have Saturn also in Aquarius, also representing humanity, the human race. And yes, on the external level, what we are witnessing to the highest degree, certainly in our lifetimes, is this incredible oppression and censorship, right? There's, there's no argument there. So Saturn brings in, I think, you know, relative to this full moon, it brings in the, the, the undeniable sense of oppression and restriction. Now, here where I am located in this part of the world, we've just gone into our fifth lockdown, number five. So, uh, and it's, you know, it's different in every country, you know, in UK, they just um, lifted all restrictions and, and, and everything. So they just, they had a celebration of Freedom Day, just, just the other day. Um, in France, Paris, they were protesting thousands and thousands. I mean, it, it looked like it was hundreds and thousands of people. I don't know exactly how many, but it looked like it was a lot. Um, <clears throat> all pro protesting uh, against the the jab with the um, the document that enables us to travel, right? In Greece, Europe, Greece, the same uh, protest was going on for the same reason, and it all happened relatively close together. So, you know, there there is a lot going on relative to pushback, and there are a lot of people. Um, resisting, uh, trying to stand up. Um, the, the restriction and oppression and control and the censorship is, it's just, it's totally suffocating. I completely understand, completely agree. But um, well, before I make that point, let me just make a few points about Pluto. So the moon, the full moon is sandwiched in between Saturn and Pluto. Now, which one is closer? It's obviously Pluto, right? Even though the conjunction from Pluto to the moon is an out of sign conjunction, right? So some people might not understand what that means, but what it means is that here's the full moon, okay? Whoa. <laughs> okay, there's the sun in Leo. There's the full moon in Aquarius. So here we have Saturn in Aquarius at 10 degrees, right? And here we have Pluto in Capricorn, okay, at 25. Now, Pluto is not in Aquarius. So people, some people who are not, um, don't understand aspects and things like that might not be able to see that that Pluto is actually what's called conjunct the moon, meaning the energies are side by side, even though they are in separate signs. Saturn is clearly there, it's in the same sign, okay, but Saturn is actually about 10 degrees away from the moon, okay, and Pluto is only about five degrees away from the moon. So the closer planet to the moon is actually Pluto, which in one way is better, I think, right? <clears throat> because Saturn absolutely, in no uncertain terms, corresponds to consensus reality, government, okay, systems and control. There's no two ways about that. Certainly through our perceived, projected reality. The flip side to that coin, of course, is that regardless of what is going on out there, to a very large extent, <clears throat> if we have integrated Saturn within us, the archetype of Saturn within us, we are still very aware and we still witness what appears to be going on on the external, but we are not as affected by it. That, that is an absolute fact. So here Saturn is retrograde as well. So it is pointing to an internal principle and focus while Saturn is moving retrograde. Pluto is also retrograde, so there's another internal uh, process and journey that's going on relative to Pluto. Now, Pluto on the collective level is, well, it's the the soul of the planet and then it's the individual soul of every single human being. 
and it's the process of evolution and it's the process of death and rebirth, the process of destruction. So Pluto's forces, as I've always said, it doesn't come through as a walk in the park. It comes through where it really confronts us with deep, 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 um, deep matters inside our own soul structure, makeup, evolutionary path that confront our own selves with what it is we need to transform within ourselves. Our own personal limitations and fears would correspond to both Pluto and Saturn. So at the external level, it's going to be the pushback from the sense of still feeling enormous restrictions. The moon in Aquarius is the people um, representing the people, as in we've, we've had enough of this absolute bollocks. <laughs> we've just had enough. And Pluto is going to be perhaps the violence or the destruction that comes along as well and or a sense of greater power to some extent. Now, what I find particularly interesting is that I recently discovered that there's a, um, a billionaire, I've just forgotten his name, but anyway, he's produced a phone called the Freedom Phone. So I don't know how many of you are aware of this. Some of you might be, some of you may not be. Now, the, you, you cannot get a more descriptive um, phrase freedom phone for what would correspond to certainly aquarius freedom and of course the phone would correspond to mercury third house gemini and so forth right and so this this brings in all those components but certainly aquarius and i'm highlighting this because with the amount of censorship saturn um the inability for people to have um, freedom of speech, Aquarius, Uranus, then someone has come up with this incredible idea who had the, you know, the goods, the money, whatever, the status, blah, 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 to back it up and has brought it to the world. Now, people can look at that in any way they like, but at the end of the day, it is a freedom phone and what does that mean in simple terms it basically means that it's a phone that cannot be censored or tracked it is an expensive phone but it's no more expensive than your latest iPhone or an iPhone that you bought a couple of years ago or whatever it's around about the same price or maybe a bit cheaper anyway I, I just I'm, I'm not an advocate for this freedom phone I'm not trying to you know help the billionaire make more billions you know he's, he's got enough money but you know it could have been a poor person that came up with that that idea but it wasn't it had just happened to be who it is so we need to kind of detach from who he is and what he does and so forth and just look at what he's brought to us okay if if that's something that we are interested in or consider to be useful i certainly do um so this is this is like the you know full moon in Aquarius energy and the thing is we've got another full moon next month in August in of course we do duh I meant another full moon in Aquarius okay so we've got two full moons in Aquarius kind of like in a row right it's it's pretty interesting so this is to me this really highlights again the people and humanity the collective the human race the human family okay and just where where they are relative to what's being presented to us um now let's just draw it back to some more personal um ways of understanding this and this is this is a really important point because when we have the understanding that regardless of what appears externally um whatever's going on inside us is is going to be uh encountered outside of ourselves you know there's there's so many people that have um spoken on that you know astrologically psychologically spiritually and so forth you know i don't need to 
um, create this a class for teaching what what it means to to understand your own inner sort of soul structure and psychic structure and internal uh, reference frame and internal sort of perceptions and how that gets projected and why it gets projected and you know it's these are things that we kind of need to study on our own right but anyway it's just an important point because um i really like this comment by jeff green and this is relative to Uranus. He's talking about Uranus here, but we, we can actually connect this, of course, to Aquarius because Uranus does rule Aquarius. So does Saturn for that matter, okay, in traditional astrology, but in evolutionary astrology. And given that we are um, at such crucial times of the planet's own evolution, we, we are really working with this. <laughs> well, what we're working with is... Um, Uranus squaring Saturn, right? So this square that's happening, you know, all year is is what we are seeing out there in the world. We're seeing the consensus reality, the systems, the control, the impression, oppression, suppression, depression, Saturn, hanging on for dear life to wanting to maintain its authority and control on the planet. And Uranus is not having a bar of it, as it wouldn't. And so these two squaring each other, of course, all year, the dance that they uh, are having together is the external result we are seeing as the pushback from certain groups, communities and people and the, um, the authorities, the systems, the powers in place, so to speak, uh, forcing coercing forcing as much as they possibly can to maintain their control which is exactly what saturn did chronos in mythology that's exactly what he did he feared anybody or anything ever overtaking him out of that fear came the eating his own children he was going to put anybody down or out that he thought would ever overpower him. This is, we, <laughs> this is literally what's happening on the planet now. Because evolution has to take place. Revolution has to take place. These old systems that have been around for over 6,000 years in, in one way or another, they have to transmute. They have to transmute. So naturally, because this reality is governed by the forces of Saturn, there's, there's going to be enormous resistance from Saturn, which is what? The government, systems, control. There's, there's never been... Um, really in essence a true ongoing level of freedom for people on this planet for the last six thousand years there really hasn't been there's been you know um little pockets of it here and there with different breakthroughs and things like that but this this is a completely different thing now this is well many many refer to this as the ascension process the ascension process could just be uh, very easily correlated to evolution. And even though there's this pushback and there's this resistance and so on and so forth, what a lot of people probably don't understand is that what we are seeing and experiencing is really just an, a reflection of our own inner consciousness. <laughs> I mean, if every single person had integrated Saturn within and it wasn't projected out there, there would be no, we, we just wouldn't have the, the structure of the reality that we do. We would have a very different um, experience of reality because we would have a very different perception that gets projected to the exterior. So I guess I'm highlighting this because if, 
we we can get really pissed off and really angry and really upset at what we are witnessing out there but the more we do that the more we are unlikely to check what's going on in here and in here and so any resistance and everything we identify out there as being the problem well it's never going to change out there as long as we continue to see it as out there. So an Aquarius full moon, it just, you know, it, it brings all this to home. You know, it highlights these sorts of things, right? Uh, here's the comment that I wanted to read. Um, so he says one of, one of the dangers, and he really, he's talking about a Uranus transit, but we are going to relate this to Aquarian energy, full moon in Aquarius. It's a full moon. And it is actually, even though it's very wide and in traditional terms, you know, a lot of people would go, well, no, that's not, um, it's too far. So see Uranus over here is at 14 degrees of Taurus, right? Now Taurus squares Aquarius and Leo, doesn't it? And it's opposite Scorpio, obviously. So Uranus is actually square, this full moon as well. It's just pretty far away from it, okay? Um, but it's still there in the picture. And Uranus actually rules Aquarius. So I think it's important to consider this. Now, one of the dangers with the Aquarian Uranian sort of energy is that um, you can misinterpret the source of problems um, because Uranus does correspond to our projected creation and reality. He says that individually this means that we all project and create uh, or create an external uh, reality conditions that simply precisely reflect our inner state of beingness, which is what I was just saying the last 10 minutes. When the various dynamics or components of this inner beingness become restrictive to further evolutionary growth, as experienced during a Uranus transit, then most of us continue to project that the source of the restriction is the specific circumstances or condition rather than correctly perceiving an inner restriction that needs to be changed thus this creates the possibility of misinterpreting the source of our problems during this transit if if look if you guys really 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 understand what that comment was saying then you'll be in greater appreciation for what i'm sharing here today the the the, the simple way to put it is that this full moon in aquarius it does give us an opportunity to really check in on ourselves where we ourselves have created limitations and restrictions, knowingly or unknowingly. And so the more we can align, correct, transmute, transform, release, bring consciousness into our inner structures the more the external can also shift as well nothing's going to shift out there as long as we are stuck inside here with structures and perceptions that hold us in conditioned perceptions of reality so the change and the revolution and the revelation really does have to come from within a lot of people hear that, a lot of people talk about it, but a lot of people either don't know what it means or don't know how to do it. Because it's not, that's not something we are taught at school, is it? You know, that's something that we learn through our own seeking, our own investigation, our own level of waking up. So whilst it is important for us all to stand united on matters that speak to our sovereignty and freedom, freedom of choice, freedom of speech, 
those things are absolutely primary and necessary for us all to be united. But if we do not do the checking in on ourself, then it's it's a false uniting because we are uniting on a on a platform on on an issue that we have not even bothered to correct or examine within our own self. And that's why change externally takes so long, like really significant, big, big, big changes, whether it's in our own personal life or as a collective experience, it takes a long time for those, for those kinds of changes to take place because there's eight and a half billion people on the planet if 85% of those are on the consensus spectrum, how are we going to see significant changes out there? We're not. So it's up to us. This, you know, we can project it onto the government, onto this, onto that, onto the dark forces, onto the evil, the Kabbalahs, the whatever you want to call them, the reptilians, the Rosicrucians, you know, <laughs> there's so many hooks for the shadow. There's so many hooks and we can always hook into it if we want to, or we can turn it around and check out what's going on inside ourselves. We've always got the option to do that, always, every full moon, every single day. So this full moon, I see it as a, a sense of First of all, detaching from the drama, detaching Aquarius, getting a further clarity and perspective, objective, detached perspective of where we stand in the role that we play in this incredible life and world. And also the because some of the some of the other things that connect to Aquarius is what individuation, which means what authenticity. What do we mean by authenticity? Being authentic to who you truly are. You can be totally authentic and free within yourself, regardless of what's appearing out there. So it is about being true to ourself, being real to ourself, being authentic with ourself. That's what can create freedom, liberation. It is about being aware of community uh, consciousness, community, people, one big family. It is about uniting and it is about primarily to notice what you are projecting onto whom and onto what. There's no greater power. The only greater power would be the, the, the direct source consciousness itself, which we are just an expression of. The greatest power a soul and a human being can experience is the integration of their own inner self-empowerment and self-authority. That's how you live an authentic life because that means that you, you have awareness over what you are projecting outside of yourself. Full Moon in Aquarius is brilliant for helping us see these kind of themes or issues or develop greater understanding or have more insights. But, you know, again, we must, uh, we must bring into the picture the, the Pluto Saturn. And so that's where I think there's going to be some hard energies to deal with. It could also be that there's a process of, um, a really positive transformation of something you've been able to integrate personally in, in your own life, just even the last couple of weeks since the last new moon cycle, that's Pluto 
enabling you to actually um, transform more in, in yourself, to be more closely aligned, Pluto, soul, with Aquarius, your authentic self. So there is that possibility of something coming through for you on that level. And if, if Saturn is playing out on a healthy level for you, on an integrated level for you, then the oppression of Saturn won't nearly be as obvious. It will be obvious out there because it is so damn obvious out there, but it won't be felt as acutely within. So it just comes down to how integrated we can be, how much awareness we can bring into our personal life story and circumstances, and how much are we projecting out there regardless of what still appears to be going on. So that's the way I see this particular full moon. It's, um, it's, it, is, it is an energy that's going to really highlight the human race and um, what, what everybody's sort of experiencing as a collective family, as it were. But if everybody was to understand that what we are experiencing largely comes from our own inner unconscious material, then that's when we would actually be in a greater position of power relative to, you know, our, our life moving forward as well, individually and as a collective family. <clears throat> because it's absolutely useless and futile to just project blame onto this, that and the other. Um, there's, there's no real sense of um, inner true empowerment when there's uh, blame projected. It doesn't matter what, what it is. It doesn't matter if somebody wronged you. It doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter what's happened. It takes a lot, though, to get to that level, but it is possible. Um, okay, so some of the other features, which I'll, I will come back and talk about. We have Venus who's just ingressed into Virgo. And um, she's going to kind of fly through that, but I'll try and come back and talk about that. Um, the asteroid Vesta, she's there, uh, just ingressed into Libra, and there's uh, Venus in Virgo. And also recently, just a few days ago, Chiron went um, stationary retrograde. And that's pretty interesting because when I was thinking about, um, and I'll pro possibly come back and do a separate video for this, but just a note to consider relative to the new moon cycle in Cancer two weeks ago, which was square Chiron and opposite Pluto, it is very likely that what was activated through Chiron at that time, if it did impact you, that the the trigger was so raw and so confronting and it likely did come from an external source such as another person and so because Chiron was direct at the time you see and so now Chiron has gone retrograde and so whatever came up for you during that time if indeed something did and I know for many people it did it did for myself as well now that Chiron has gone retrograde now's the time to actually really go back in again and work on those deep sort of um, wounds that came up could have been just one wound it could have been um what do we mean by wound you know there's so many things that we could say about that but just to use a basic example that there could have been something really painful that came up between you and a particular person in your life, whether that was a friend or a family member or a lover, could have been any one of those people. But if something really raw, you know, was triggered during that time that was quite deep and, and it kind of, you know, it really opened that wound further, well, yes, it was painful, but it is now up to you to actually really start bringing the remedy into that. The remedy is going to come through Chiron going, retrograde now so it is an opportunity for for healing and Chiron's actually trying the sun and sextile the moon right in this full moon chart right so that's a positive um what else was there
yeah, that's, I think that's, ah, oh, <laughs> I'm glad I remembered this. Okay, so I checked out the Sabian symbol for two Aquarius and, and, and here's why I think um, relative to the collective paradigm before us, there's, there's going to be some explosive things that happen, sudden unexpected things that take place um, once this full moon kind of kicks in and even into August because we have another full moon in Aquarius again. And the Sabian symbol for this full moon, the keynote or phrase is an unexpected thunderstorm. Now, it says, the, the keynote says that the need to develop the inner security which will enable us to meet unexpected crises. That can be taken in a lot of different ways, but I think at the collective sort of spectrum of things, it can absolutely correspond to natural sort of disasters that may occur, like further flooding type of situations, natural sort of disasters in that way. On the other hand, it could also speak to an unexpected thunderstorm as a metaphor could be speaking to the experience of shock, the experience of some kind of trauma and shock that we encounter relative to external circumstances that take place. And it talks there about the need to sustain our inner and cultivate more of and nurture more of our own inner level of security in order to be able to withstand the external crises that appears. So the Sabian symbol is, is basically saying something is going to hit the fan, it's going to hit it pretty hard and it's going to be a really big shock to the world, really. So it kind of, uh, it's pointing us to just get ready for something really unexpected to happen and just be prepared, be prepared internally for what you might need to draw into to actually manage what's going to happen because it's going to be a bit of a shock. And um, Aquarius is ruled by Uranus and Uranus rules shock. Shock, unexpected, unpredictable, radical, um, completely removing us from our comfort zone. And that's the other thing about the issue of you know, needing to check in within ourselves relative to our, our own personal restrictions and limitations and conditions where there's you know, layers and layers and layers of that stuff in all of us. Um, oh, I've just lost that point. Where did it go? Come back point. Yes, that was the point. So on that theme again, then, you know, the square from Uranus is the uncomfortable reminder and shock of the way that we've always lived and known life to be is just simply not the way life is going to be moving forward. And I'm pretty sure that every single person on the planet now can actually see that. I reckon about six months ago, people were still very unsure about that still kind of hanging on to the way things were and thinking that it, oh, it's going to get back to normal. It's going to get back to normal. You know, things will be normal again. No, they won't be normal. <laughs> they never will be normal again. It'll be a new reality, a new paradigm. It, it depends with your own ascension process, your own evolutionary process, what you are tuned into. Because this, this incredible crisis and incredible wave that's coming through, which is it's just shocked the whole entire planet, it will eventually come to some kind of conclusion. It, the intensity will subside and things will look very different. So it's not going to be forever because nothing is. But it certainly is testing our patience, right, because it's been going on for a year and a half now, right? 
And I don't think any of us in our lifetime have experienced on a collective level having to have to be confronted with and deal with the situations that we've dealt with on a consistent basis for 18 months. I don't think we've ever had that experience, ever. So it is testing us, testing our inner resources, our inner willpower, our inner sense of perception, our inner structure of reality, our own inner liberation, our own inner consciousness. It's testing everything, everyone. But it will it will subside and it will come to um, a different level because it will transform from where it is. So, <laughs> but yeah, that, that little Sabian symbol I think is a little bit concerning in certain ways, but on the other hand, um, provided we can, you know, have some awareness around that, we can adapt in the way that we need to, depending on how it shows up for us. Or we can just be totally shocked. Shock is Uranus, without question. So, yeah, freedom phone. <laughs> freedom phone. I thought that was brilliant. I thought, how Aquarius is that? Um, another full moon in Aquarius next month. And that'll be, it's interesting actually, because um, obviously I'll come back and talk about these points. There's a new moon um, on the lion's gate, you know, the, the cosmic lion's gate portal that's opening up. And so given the transitions that are going on and the process of ascension, you can imagine the power of this lion's gate this year, right? It's, it's, it's just going to be phenomenal. It really is. And so there's a new moon on the 8th of August. That's when the Lion's Gate is officially like in its full kind of amplification. And then about, you know, two weeks later, there's another full moon in Aquarius again. So this, the energy of Leo Aquarius is being highly activated at the moment since the sun went, of course, into Leo and we're having a full moon in Aquarius. And then we're going to have a new moon in Leo and then another full moon in Aquarius. So Leo Aquarius archetypes are being highly amplified over these, you know, um, next sort of six to eight weeks, right? And so the takeaway from that is our own sense of identity, Leo, and courage because we have to actually, we really have to draw in from a deep place of courage at the moment, don't we? Be, because of the nature of reality and because of just how oppressive it, it looks and feels, not everywhere, it's different in different places, but everyone's had a, a taste of that. Everyone's been subjected to that in some way, shape or form. So we've, we've all kind of felt that in different ways. So, you know, this, it's, it's really... Um, it's really, really tough, actually. You know, there's the, 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 the mental health, the mental health and well-being of so many humans is, is just at a really low point. You know, pe people are, are, are really struggling, really struggling. Um, so this is, this is why we need courage. We, we need to tap into our heart, Leo, the heart source center, the will, to keep going in the face of adversity, to stand, you know, with, with our heart centered, you know, vibrating from that space and the Aquarius component bringing in, you know, objectivity and detachment and clarity and seeing the bigger picture, not just seeing it from Leo, seeing it from both Leo and Aquarius. That beautiful polarity when integrated and working in the most productive and functional way you could say it really just shows courage and humanity working for the same sort of cause and purpose in unison so these energies are really amplified at the moment and there's a lot that we can tune into and take away from this i'll come back and talk more about this when we, we 
sort of approach the um, the lion's gate and the new moon in Leo. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, yeah, so just check out where the full moon in Aquarius is in your chart. Have a think about the new moon in Cancer a couple of weeks ago and just consider some of the points that I mentioned and see what speaks to you. And, um, yeah, just leave your comments and questions below. Um, thank you again, you know, to all of you who continuously tune in and um, comment and share your stories. I really appreciate all of you very, very much. I am sometimes so overwhelmed by the love that I receive just in personal emails that I get from people. Um, there's there's so much love and appreciation and gratitude in so many people's hearts and it's just such a beautiful reminder you know that there is still so much love and beauty and gratitude and appreciation and respect there's still so much of that around you know and even though things still look quite bleak, we, we will get through this. We will get through it and we will be okay. And when we get to the other side, as it were, we'll actually understand the necessary um, difficulties that we went through and why they were important at this time and how that has enabled us to evolve to the next level. It's, it's, it's being forced upon us because the human race, as a general rule, consensus reality, 85% of it, whatever, um, we're very sort of stuck and set in our ways. We, you know, most of us don't like change. So when you're talking about the globe, <laughs> the planet evolving to this next level, it's, it's you know, the, the, the push has to come through pretty hard to kind of jolt people out of their slumber. So it'll be okay. Much love. See you soon.